もしやコスモではコスモ meet me please コスモ AP ラミュアリースポーツ Welcome to part 54 of my 76 Mazda Cosmo restoration. On this episode, I hope to finish up fixing some of those items I'm not quite happy with. And I have never at all been thrilled with these brackets I made to、uh, secure the Vintage Air HVAC unit. Now, partially my fault. But partially the fault of Vintage Air because all the mounting holes on the rear and sides are just in such bizarre locations. Gotta make sure that these disconnected hoses. Stay clean and reasonably sealed up so that when the system is eventually vacuumed out, there aren't any contaminants before filling. Oh, yeah, now I remember one of the reasons I don't like this bracket. One of the bolts is impossible to access. I'm going to say the same thing I said when I installed this originally. This is a universal kit, so the fit is universally wrong for every application. The only two mounting holes that make sense are the two at the front. Then at the back, we have this bizarre arrangement of a single mounting hole here, another one at the top. And nothing over on this side, I added this one. So, honestly, I have absolutely no idea what Vintage Air was thinking, other than the fact that perhaps this was a kit they made for a specific car, and then suddenly decided one day, hey, let's sell it as a universal. My intention using this half inch aluminum tubing was to build a frame to completely surround the HVAC box so then I could pick up the mounting points. Except the idiot who placed these hoses left basically no room between the hose. And the rear of the HVAC unit, plus the position of this mounting hole and that mounting hole, just makes things almost impossible. And the center vent duct means I can't run a piece of tube straight across. I'd have to、uh, move it out and over the duct, which would make the duct almost damn near impossible to install. So instead, I'll make it out of 5 millimeter aluminum and it will kind of wrap around the unit. About 55 millimeters. Yeah, I'll just mark each end at 55 millimeters. And I'm not sure what this horizontal line is. It came on the metal, and it's almost at 55 millimeters, which is kind of irritating. Oh, this is going to take a while. Some variability in where I can place this, so I think right about here will do the job. And mark the center of the hole. And I need to leave a little gap here because this seam isn't exactly straight, so let's just say three quarters of an inch. That'll do. Okay, and I just need to give maybe a quarter inch of clearance.
Now on camera, it may look straight, but let me tell you, there is not a single straight surface on this unit. Yeah, two inches. Is that what she said? There's also so much spring in this plastic that um, it's difficult to keep everything lined up where I want it. So I'm just going to kind of put some pressure on it there and then eyeball the location of the center of the hole. And I also know that the hole itself is one and a half inches above this seam, which is about here. Try to keep this as straight and accurate as I can. Well, in theory, that's my hole. And I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Wow, that actually lined up. And I'll just reuse one of the existing spacers and uh, weld it right on. And it all still fits. Perfect. Well next I have to pick up this oddly positioned riv nut. So I'm just going to uh, eyeball a vertical cross member here. I call it about here. And then also guess at where I need to cut it. Let's say an inch and a half. Cool, that'll work. Probably enough clamping to keep this from warping, right? The corners kind of looked unfinished. Well now I just have to figure out the location of this hole, which of course is what she said. So, use a square to maybe find the center of it and measure from the top of the existing bracket turns out to be basically an inch. 
the other direction looking at two centimeters and two centimeters is right here now I'm gonna really quickly try to tack weld this I think there's plenty of air space between the heater box and the aluminum should be fine Well, that tack is terrible, but no damage, perfectly fine. Now, this should be jigged up so it doesn't move too much. We'll see. That's fully cooled down. I had to uh, use some washers to space it. Holy crap. Damn thing still fits. Now the right side bracket is basically the same as the left, except there's only two mounting holes here and the one I added right there. I might use the relay holes to pick up a little bit more rigidity, but we'll see. I'm just gonna eyeball the center at about there. Now the next piece has to clear this little bump in the uh, blower housing, so just move it out a little bit and make a mark. Looks like 8 inches to me. Which of course is what she said. Now this is the hole I had to add because there was absolutely nothing on this side to create a decent mount point. And I think that my flange can be made out of this uh, three quarter by, uh, I don't know, one and a half inch square tubing. Ah, oh, what a color too. I've marked an inch, which is how far this now C channel will go underneath this part of the bracket, and it has to go at kind of an angle. And in order to fit this underneath, I think I just have to notch about five millimeters right here, and then cut at an angle. About five millimeters right there. Then I'm gonna guess that this will be the correct angle. It'll probably be close enough either way. It's just small enough that I think the best tool is the Dremel. Oh. 
oh, well, I just realized something. I didn't need to cut these angles at all. I think all I needed to do is just provide a relief cut so that it fits. Yeah, I, uh, I really overthought that the first time. So we'll just position it slightly below the hole. Kind of force it into alignment for a sec and then mark the middle. Let's call that the middle. Then we'll just transfer this mark using a square. So. Oh, FYI, I got some new shop shorts. Um, they're camo, so I hope you can still see me. Two very quick tacks should hold it. I don't want to weld these right to the end on the first round because there's a gap here that's being held apart by washers to maintain the angle. So I'm going to weld maybe 90% of the way and then once it's cooled go back and weld the extra quarter inch. That'll prevent this thing from pulling too much. Perfect. Still fits. And just a little trim to make it slightly more stylish. Just get all of the brackets back onto this thing, then it can go back into the car. Well, everything still seems to line up, which is good. Now, here's where it gets difficult this thing has to be held in position while I figure out how to connect it to the car. And that is, uh, that is not as easy as it seems because. Once again, there's not a single straight side on this thing. very difficult to do because there's limited access and I have a little sharpened bent piece of welding rod that I hope I can use to scribe the location of the bolt hole hey that sort of worked Well, the hole's a little closer to the 90 degree that I would like, but there's still just enough room for a bolt. Uh, 
I practiced this maneuver about six times off camera. Now this is going to be a lot easier to do now that one side of this is held in place. For the right side, I cut another piece of aluminum angle and the idea is that once it's trimmed to the appropriate length, it will butt right against the rest of the bracket. Now this is extremely difficult to measure because I need three more hands to hold this thing in place, but I'm just trying to get the distance between the firewall and the bracket while trying to keep this reasonably square. Looks like about 45 millimeters. Now obviously these brackets are going to require a lot of trimming. Okay, that's pretty level. So I'll just make a mark. And then it all comes out of the car again. might not be the most elegant way to put this back together, but I just, I don't feel like taking this thing out of the car again. Still pretty straight, fits well, so, eh, has to come back out of the car, go to the bench to make all those tack welds into full welds. Even though I didn't brace any of this, it didn't seem to warp. But before I go further, I'd like to pretty it up a bit. So, I found this 24 millimeter socket, which is about the same size as the boss it needs to connect to on the car. So there's a lot of material here that can go away. It's pretty damn solid as it is, but it's all hanging off the firewall by two points. So time to remake the uh, vertical hangers. Yeah, about there.
it actually needs to be bent to about 100, 110 degrees. Yeah, close enough. I just put a little wedge underneath to take the sag out of it. And that's about where I need to cut. I'll just use a wooden shim to temporarily wedge this in place. Just add enough friction to hold it where I need it. And transfer the marks I made on the car to the bracket. Then just cut it. And drill it. And weld it. And the next step is, you guessed it, making sure it still fits in the car. And for the 97th time, back in the car to make sure it still fits. Cool. Now the other side is exactly the same as this side, off-camera. And after some off-camera work, the right side hanger is in place. So, let's see if it fits. And that is a strong bracket. You could practically lift the car with it and it's a thousand times better than this junk. And to finish off, I just need to remount the relays. That turned out exactly half an inch down. And the relays want to be an inch and a half apart. So right about there, none of this has to be perfect. I can't directly clamp this thing in the vise because of the odd shape. It hits the workbench. Now this is thick enough that I can just tap it out to M6. And I drilled the hole a little bit smaller than needed so that I have a little bit of wiggle room with this tap. The aluminum is nice and soft. Cool. And thus, the rebracketing is complete. Now I'm just going to have to get some longer, stupid, non-metric bolts to uh, allow enough length to install the wire clamps. But otherwise, done. And we can call that a success because with the dash back on, all the ducts are where they're supposed to be. Next on the list, let's deal with the ball joint issue causing this. Now with the car roughly at ride height, here's the problem. The good 15 degrees of positive camber. Now ideally, that should be about 1 to 2 degrees of negative camber at ride height, depending on how race car you are. Now if you recall back to episodes 39 and 40, I was able to use RX-7 front control arms 
by using 82 to 86 Mazda 626 ball joints. And I figured that I could correct for that excessive positive camber by moving the top of the shock tower. Now, that ain't gonna happen for two reasons. One, I would have to move it in about an inch. And B, even if it was in the right spot, moving it would offer no adjustability. These things always get stuck. God, what idiot made this stuff so tight? I do not have a set of snap ring pliers. So this is kind of a raging pain in the ass. Note to self, buy a set of snap ring pliers. Now this ball joint should pop right out. It's not like it's been subject to roads. My plan is actually quite simple. Switch to FC RX-7 ball joints, which bolt to the control arm. I'll fab a plate that is slotted, allowing the ball joint to be adjusted in and out so everything can be dialed into place on this essentially prototype suspension. And I'm just going to use a little bit of PUR15 metal ready to uh, prevent this from flash rusting again. And after being kept moist for 20 minutes, needs to be thoroughly rinsed off. Which of course is what she said. This edge of the control arm is straight, so I can always use it as my reference. And I'll just start by putting the ball joint into the same place the stock joints were. And I guess lining it up. I kind of already know that 11 and a half millimeters is uh, where it needs to be. We'll mark the mounting holes. And trace a line around it so it's easier to install and remove in roughly the same spot.
well, that's a good way to ruin one of those. Well, to make sure this actually works, I'll just clamp everything in place as a mock-up. Hmm, as I slip this hub on, all of this feels extremely familiar. I think I've already deja this vu. Yep, that fixed it. And remember, that suspension right now is at full droop, so it would be naturally tending towards positive camber. Okay, the joint flange is just under one and three quarters at the widest, so I'll make my flange, eh, let's say, an eighth less than two inches. This is some seriously thick stock. I'm gonna be here a while. Actually, it cuts pretty easily. And that wasn't too bad. A line down the middle. With the ball joint centered side to side and clamped down, it's pushed as far as it will go that way, which is as far as it will go towards the car. So I just have to mark the bolt holes at this end of travel. Now with the joint as far that way as it can go, which would be away from the car, I'll just mark the positions of the holes. Now each hole is 12 millimeters, so at six millimeters is the center. And center punch them. And now to drill out all four holes, starting at eighth inch. Then quarter inch. Oops, I guess that hole was done. And so on and so forth. A 31 64ths bit, whatever that is, is the perfect match for the bolt hole. sharp. Oh, that really sliced me. Now just four more of those. 31 64ths is apparently 12 millimeters in real numbers. And now I just have to go back and forth with the end mill to make holes in the slots. I'll just slot the other one off camera. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. And then there were two. I just have to grind off the plate that I welded on to pad the press-in ball joint. To line down the center. Doesn't actually have to be perfect. It's this mark that has to be perfect. Because I'm just using this mark to center the mill. With a tiny drill bit as the guide. I'll just run the grinder down, make a rough notch so I don't have to mill away as much material. Quicker. And now I'll just cut me a channel all the way across. Cool. Only three more to cut. It is extremely convenient that the position of the ball joint, plus or minus a millimeter or two, places the ball joint mounting hole dead center of the Cosmo ball joint hole because it means my flange slot also goes in the center. Try saying the words flange slot three times fast. With the flange somewhat firmly clamped in place, I can center it up. Thankfully, this wall of the control arm is straight, so it serves as a perfect reference point. 12 millimeters. Not 12. After a lot of off-camera fiddling, it's in the right spot. Of course, it's going to move when it's welded anyway, so... Now I'll just scribe some lines. The relief cuts in the flange are actually about 7 millimeters. So these lines need to move in about seven millimeters. Note to self, pick up some ultra flexible plastic rulers. Close enough. And now just cut it out.
Damn thing doesn't fit. Ugh, this thing's in the way, whatever it is. That was a bit of a clearance issue solved with a little grinding. Now it sits flat. Time to weld her in. <laughs> and just a little bit of grinding to smooth out some of these welds at the nose. With the ball joint bolted in place, the rest of this stuff can go back on the car. Ugh, seems like I've done this about a million times, so I'm trying to make it quick. And that's it. That's a wheel with some proper camber and all the adjustment necessary to make sure the suspension can be aligned. And that's it. Thus ends this episode. 
Now, obviously, I still have the passenger side to do, but those steps are exactly the same as the driver's side, so I won't subject you to it. And I'll take that time to gather some parts to start the project that I've wanted to do since I got this thing. That's right. Next episode, air suspension. <laughs>